And Rafael Trujillo is one of the most fearless guitar players of the current generation. With not even 30 years old, he's currently shredding the hell out of technical progressive death metal. I'm a big fan of his current band Obsidious and of course of his old band Obscura, one of the most legendary technical death metal bands. And what you are about to hear is one of the most complex and difficult sweep sections that I have ever learned and why you even if you are not even close to my level, should learn it too. Here we go with today's video. Hey Guitar Champion, what's going on? I'm Justin Hombach, back from my practice cave and welcome to today's video. So yes, this section is extremely complex, extremely fast, a lot of stuff is happening and maybe when you're listening to the first time you may think, why the fuck should I learn it? I cannot even imagine myself playing like this. Well. I want to take this video not only to show you what is happening inside of this really cool sweep progression of Ethereal Skies by Obscura, I also want to take the opportunity to encourage you to play stuff that seems way above your head, way above your level and way too hard for you. Because it's not only what we are playing but the approach how we are practicing it. And even if you are right now on a level where you can barely play five string sweep arpeggios fluently, I highly recommend to you to stick with me. Because for me, even though a lot of things in the past sounded really sloppy and not really tight, it helped a lot that I was always kind of curious and probably brave to check out sections and solos that seems to be way above my level. I grew a lot by at least trying to learn this. Because when you're seeing this one a little bit more abstract, then you realize, oh, there's more than meets the eye. There are so many different topics, for example, in a hard section where I can improve by just simply learning it. Maybe not on the fast tempo, maybe not super precise, but at least I've got a little bit out of my comfort zone, learning something new, learning something more difficult, and seeing really, really clearly how I can grow and improve by just trying. And today I want to show you this kind of abstract method, how I also approach on these kind of sections to really see and to really find out not only what's inside of the section, but how also we can apply it into our own playing and into our own solos. So if you want to learn more about the technical side behind this, then I can highly recommend to check out Rafael Trujillo. He is offering a lot of Skype and Zoom lessons. You can contact him through this email and I highly recommend to check out some lessons of him. He has a really cool YouTube channel where he's breaking down some of the solos from his current band Obsidious, which I also highly recommend. And hit him up, ask him for a lesson. It's one of the biggest things on my current to-do list to have at least one lesson with him this year because this guy is really insane. All right, what we are going to face in this section is first, in bar one, we are talking about sweep picking articulation and rhythmical ideas inside of sweeping. And also in the end of bar one, we have a really cool hand synchronization exercise. So already, really cool stuff only in bar one. In bar two, we have interesting diminished ideas and diminished sequences. In part three, we have a really cool approach 
to splice up arpeggios into different sections and combine them with tapping as well. In bar 4 we are taking a really cool look into inversions. In bar 5 we have chord extensions. In bar 6 we are going into some symmetrical kind of sweeping with augmented sweeps and all this kind of stuff. In bar 7 we have a melodic approach to sequencing. And in bar 8 we have a really cool combination out of legato, tapping and sweeping and some sweep sequences. All right. A lot of stuff happening in those eight bars so let's take a deeper look into all of them and how we can use the idea and the informations out of those individual bars and apply them into our own playing. Here we go. As always you can find the tabs for today's video in the description box there's a link where you can download them and this lesson is with a guitar that is tuned down to D standard. So after a first pickup line we are starting with the sequence and we are first starting with E minor arpeggios and here we are talking really cool articulation rhythmical ideas and slow it goes like this. Okay, first off we have this E minor arpeggio starting on the E, going to the 3rd, to the 5th, to the E. So 12, 10, 9, 9 from the E to the G string. And the cool thing or the important thing here is that we are not stopping when we have reached the G string. The G string has to ring. So here we have an obvious longer note than just a 60 note with a break behind it, with a pause behind it. It rings over the next few notes. Differently than to the next section because now we have this E minor major 7 arpeggio. We're starting with a typical 5 string E minor arpeggio and then going to the major 7 and this major 7 is articulate it. So here we need a little bit more push on that note to get this articulation and also the break after it, the pause after it. So this one is not hold longer. This is really staccato note, really short. Blip. So we have like this. Then we have this line. And here we are going down the E harmonic minor scale starting on the F sharp. We're going horizontally three notes and then three notes starting on the E. And then we have to shift with our index finger from the C to the B, playing this little E minor triad. Oh, sorry, <laughs> excuse me. And resolving to the F sharp here. Now here, this is a really cool hand synchronization exercise because we have some really interesting uh, position shifts in it. First, this one here and the position shifts can be a bitch for hand synchronization because it always costs a little bit more time with our left hand and we have to deal with taking time from a note to have enough space, enough time to make the position shift. Of course in this high tempo we are talking about milliseconds but you can clearly feel this in your right hand when it sounds a little bit off and the picking is constant, but with the left hand we are slurring more than really playing precise. This kind of idea. So here I would recommend to practice it step by step, but in tempo. For example, just do the position shift. And focus that you're landing with your pinky the same time you're plucking with the upstock. The same with the next position shift when we're going from our index finger from the 8th fret to the 7th fret. Adding the sweep arpeggio, the triad. Be aware when you're starting here with the pinky that you start with an upstroke because uh, coming out of the line, in context from the line, we're not starting with the downstroke. We should start here with an upstroke because we have down, up, down, and then up, down, up, and here again a downstroke. All right, this is bar number one. Now you can take those ideas, for example, the rhythmical and the articulation idea and transform it into other arpeggios. You don't necessarily have to play E minor here. You could also play G major or for example, something with C major inversions, for example, like this. So you can play around a lot with those kind of ideas just by putting them into a different kind of arpeggio, a different kind of chord. All right, let's move on to bar number two. Now let's play bar number two a little bit more slowly. And 
And here, we are starting with a really typical three string sweep arpeggio shape in diminished. In this case here we have F sharp diminished. This diminished chord can be a substitution for B7, but I assume here that it is a substitution for D7 because it leads to G minor afterwards. So after this regular sweep arpeggio, we have a really cool variation that brings a really new rhythmical kind of idea to the sweep arpeggio. Again, with some really cool picking, some really cool sound and really cool articulation to it. You can try this lick, for example, also with other arpeggios. For example, like this E minor 7 here. Or let's do this one for, for C major 9, for example. Like this. All right, and then we have in the sweep arpeggio where we're not starting with the sweep, we're starting with the tapping on the 32nd fret, which is a really big octave to our more than an octave to the note where we're landing afterwards. And the rest is the really typical diminished sweep arpeggio. And the idea of starting a sweep arpeggio with a high tapping, because you can do this as well for any other arpeggios. For example, like this G minor 7. Really cool idea. All right, speaking of G minor, we are now going to G minor and we now have in bar number three, a really cool way how we can splice up arpeggios. We're starting off with this descending three string arpeggio, but we are only landing on the root note, so we're not doing the typical. And now here's the cool thing that Raphael could do, the typical five string sweep arpeggio. This idea here, but he's just playing the first descending line to the G string. Then he's jumping after a little break right to the A string and playing here the A ascending line. Really cool rhythmical idea and really cool way how you could splice up arpeggios. Let's transform this to a different arpeggio. Let's take for example E minor again. Really cool way to splice up this arpeggio, C major. A little bit more interesting and a little bit more spicy kind of way to play arpeggios instead of playing the typical this one here. Because Raphael is sticking a lot to the rhythm behind this sweep section here. And here of course I believe the biggest source of inspiration is the rhythm that we have in the rhythm guitar. But again, this is also really approachable for any other kind of solo, any other kind of situation, and it, and it can make easily your sweeps a lot more interesting. All right, let's continue. After that, we have this really cool tapping arpeggio in G minor. We're starting off by tapping the minor third of G minor, the B flat, here on the 20th fret of the D string. Then we have a hammer on from nowhere with our index finger to the 10th fret of the A string, the G. Then to the 13th fret with the pinky, the B flat, the minor third again. And then we're tapping the fifths on the 17th fret of the, D st uh, of the A string. And then we're jumping everything one octave higher. So maybe you know the slick starting with the hammer from nowhere, but this is really cool to set this higher note above our starting note. This gives this line an idea a little bit more kind of an interesting touch. Of course, and if you know your chords and your intervals, you can easily apply this lick to all kind of chords and arpeggios. All right, and after another ascending G minor sweep, we are going to the next bar. Here we are playing E minor. First as the regular five string descending sweep arpeggio shape. And now we are doing some horizontal inversions. The first one is this one here. Again with the rhythmical idea and the articulation. And then this inversion. So here we're starting off first on the minor third. And then on the fifth. And horizontal inversions is something that I really love because you can have a lot of fun with those kind of inversions. Boom, and your sweep sounds much more interesting. All right, and now in the next bar we have some chord extensions. And this bar, ooh, technically this one was the trickiest one. This one has some really weird fingerings. Let's play this one slow. Really cool. First we're starting off with C minor. 11, 9 arpeggio. Because here the middle finger is playing the 11 and the pinky is playing the 9. So this is a really cool C minor 11, 9 arpeggio. Mm -hmm. 
really cool sound, really interesting idea. And after that, we're switching to a regular C minor inversion, starting with the minor third. Really cool sequence as well. And by doing this kind of extended chords, adding intervals to your chord, you can spice up your sound so much more from the typical just playing minor triad kind of sweep up at you. Okay, in the next part we are facing a little bit more symmetrical ideas. Playing first this B flat augmented arpeggio, adding a picking line to it, a four note per string line. We are playing this one just ascending. But I think this is a really cool idea to also play it ascending and descending. And add, for example, another interval to the arpeggio. Then we are playing normal D major arpeggio. And then this D major arpeggio, but we're adding the minor sixted. So I believe everything from this is coming from G melodic minor, which is another really cool approach to just play around with sweeper patches coming from those kind of interesting scales. You just have to know where your intervals are over the fretboard and how those kind of scales are constructed. All right, let's go to the next bar and here we have some melodic approach to the sequencing ideas. This is harmonically speaking not so super interesting, but it really showcases how you can also approach melody and melodic sequencing into those kind of shred ideas. And it's a really good example for how you can build up tension with the bar before that. And resolve this tension. And now we're coming to this section. First we have this legato tapping idea. This is something that Raphael and for example Christian Munzner as well is doing a lot or love to do. Is playing a line then tapping and then release the tapping and note above the last one from the line that we played before that. What do I mean by this? We are playing 19, 15, 19, tapping to 24 and now comes our ring finger to get released to the 20th fret. So it's not like this, it's like ah! And to do this in tempo with the right coordination, uh, it's really not easy because it quickly happens that our ring finger pushed down from the left hand before we are doing the tapping motion. Then we are playing this legato line, creating an E minor 6 sound. And then we have this really cool sequence for this E minor sweep arpeggio. And I love this sequence. For example, with those kind of nonsense noodling. All right, and yeah, that's basically it. This is what you can take out and learn out of these individual bars from Ethereal Skies. And it's not only in Ethereal Skies, I believe, truly believe, that you can learn so much more by learning a solo or a sig or a section than just only the technique behind this section, but also a lot of creative ideas how you, that you can apply into your own solos. It's like finding a new box with new Lego pieces in it to finally build that big Death Star without the original Death Star Lego bricks. So see it like this. So. I hope you liked this little video for today. If you like this video, then please like the video and leave a comment and of course a subscribe. I hope I'm going to see you in my next video. Cheers so far and stay progress. Bye.